G'day, fellas, and welcome to the grand finals of Outback Octagon 2. We are finally here. It's been some time, four weeks, and it's taken us plenty of heartache, plenty of bloodshed to get to this moment, but it is my pleasure to introduce our final eight players for this evening. Sporting it on the north side of the map in the color blue, playing as the Mongols, we have Anatand. To his west, in the color pink, playing as the Abbasid Dynasty, Puppy Paw. In the color red, playing as the Mongols, what? I was going to say Wham, <laughs> Marine Lord. <laughs> that would have been awkward. In the color purple, playing as the Abbasid Dynasty as well, Don Adi. On the east side of the map, playing in the color teal, as the English, Salami. Below him, in the color orange, playing as the Ottomans, Urk. In the south of the map, in the color green, playing as the Abbasid Dynasty, it's Wham. And in the bottom of the map, playing in the color yellow as the Ottomans, Beastie Cutie. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Game number one of your grand finals is upon us. For anybody wondering how this is gonna work, let me explain. All points have been reset to zero. This is the final eight. Eight players, five games. Every single one of those eight players participates in the five games. When we get to the end, we determine who wins. We determine who came second, who came third, and everybody else in between. Well, I guess technically no one else is in between because first, second, and third, they're all uh, integers, so we'll just... Uh, f f who came first and who came last? And everybody else in between. Uh, so, that is where we're at. We got a bit of an interesting game as well. We've got three Abbasid Dynasty players here. Two Ottoman players, two Mongol players, and a single English player. So, a bit of a, a mixed bag. A lot of double-up civilizations, which is very, very interesting. So, we'll take a look at, uh, at how the map is going to be unfolding, because... We got Puppy Paw over on the water. And I think if there's anything that kind of gives him strength here, it is going to be this water economy. He doesn't really have access to a lot of resources up here. We've got four players that are trapped on this northern aspect. You've got up here Anatan, who's probably got the ability to move along the edge of the map. Not a whole bunch of gold up here, though. That's one other thing to note. Everybody does look to have their own gold here. So Marine Lord will be able to, to take a gold out a little bit further. And I think Don, Don will be able to do the same thing. Of course, Salami's quite isolated, but his nearest neighbor, Urk, is an absolute machine. We have seen this guy take out player after player after player, and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if he looks to put Salami's head on the chopping block first. Down in the south, though, looks like gold is going to be coming through as well for Wham, and Beastie's got his. So everyone should have a safe passage up to the feudal age at this stage, but your action is going to be up here for sure. Two of the favorites coming into this, Puppy Paw and Marine Lord, spawning very close to each other. The question is going to be who is able to take advantage of this because we've got the two, or at least we've got one of the Mongol players on the outside. I guess Marine Lord's also playing the Mongol. So if he wanted to, he could look to move onto a different spot, into a different area. We see now, looks like Don's going to be taking his gold to start off with. Now, let's talk a little bit about this map. Of course, this map is mega random. The way that this works is we're going to be doing mega random first. Next up, we're going to have one of Tasmania, Uluru, and uh, Blue Mountains. And then we'll finish off with Mega Random as well. That's the way it's going to work. So we'll start with Mega Random, finish with Mega Random. That way it keeps it Mega Random, not as predictable, which is always fun, right? You never know how it's going to roll on Mega Random. Now, in addition to that, between games two and three, now this matters for the Twitch viewers, not so much for the YouTube viewers. I mean, you guys will see the video. Uh, we're going to be doing a special event. Of course, we're doing the halftime show. It's lovely to have a, a halftime show that rivals the Super Bowl here on the Octagon 2, where we will be featuring the greatest plays of Outback Octagon 2. We're going to be seeing things like King Snipe, Sacred Sight Victories, Wonder Victories, the funniest moments, all of that good stuff. It's going to be happening. So I I'm sure you guys will be looking forward to that because, uh, well, you'll be determining who the winner is. So anyway, let's talk less about that, more about the game that we've got in front of us. Who's got the best spawn here? If I had to pick somebody, I'd probably... Oh, see, this is hard. I think it's got to be between Beastie and, uh, and Salami. I don't think it goes either way. Um, when you consider Beastie, I mean, he's got an Abbasid neighbor. Abbasid, obviously, pretty good civilization. Uh, Salami's got Urk on the Ottomans nearby. 
this is tough, right? Because these are both... I, I would consider these both pretty even matchups, right? Like, Wham and Beastie. Obviously, Wham, he, he's up against the best player in the world here, but he, he's a Red Bull Walla Lol attendee. He's pretty damn good at the game. Over on the East Corner, you've got, you know, you've got your your salami up against Urk, two players that are, are definitely outside of my top five but probably inside my top 10 and obviously my top 10 is a little bit crowded just like the top five is that's a dead scout right there salami gonna be losing his scout early on a bit unfortunate here but of course he does scout out wham gets a little bit of intel there but yeah i, I would suspect it's going to be one of these two and we do start to see the landmarks coming up now so it's going to be salami with the council hall down on the south side we see the twin minaret madrasa coming up for Wham. He's already got the House of Wisdom down and it's going to be the Culture Wing. So going to be looking for a fast castle. Got plenty of relics nearby. Over to Don Arty. And Don Arty going to be going into the Eco Wing to start off. Of course, he's got that stone outcropping. A beautiful little spawn for him here. Everything safely under the town center. So we'll be looking to pump out some TCs. He's actually got a pretty good spot here. I don't mind Don's spot as well. Just because I feel like Marine Lord may be a little bit preoccupied with Puppy Paw. Now, Marine Lord is aging up. Going with the Deer Stones. Up in the north side. Puppy Port is going to be going military wing. There you go. Three Abbasid players. Three different wings to open us off. Talk about balance. How good is that? Anatan in the north is going to be the first one up. The last one we didn't actually cover. It's going to be the Deerstone. So not going into Silver Tree. Now, of course, there are trading posts on the map. Neutral trading posts towards the center of the map, which we love to see. In fact, is there only the one? I might have to double check this, but I'm pretty... Oh, actually, there's another one down here on the sacred site. Speaking of sacred sites, we haven't talked much about it. In fact, this sacred site down here, this is only just going to favor uh, Beastie and Salami. Uh, simply because we might see that potential sacred victory coming through. So, interesting opening. No tower rushes just yet, despite double Mongol players. I tell you what, watch out. If you're, if you're puppy poor right now, if you're, if you're a fan of puppy poor, you got to be a bit, a little bit fearful of, of how the man's going to be doing. Take a look at this, though. We got Wham. Wham on the water. Puppy Paw on the water. The two brothers out here fishing. I wonder if they know about each other. Surely they probably do, but it's in their interests not to attack each other for the moment. We often see that in uh, in water games uh, where players will not attack each other on the water. You'll see five, six players all fishing on the same big pond. And as soon as someone starts fighting, oh, it just, it all goes terribly. Age up coming through now. There we see Puppy Paw reaching into the feudal age. Big army. Going to start moving out already and might be looking to put some pressure on over on this Uvu. Over to his east, of course, Anatand up here. Maybe considered the weak link by Puppy Paw to his south playing up against Marine Lord, one of the best players in the world. Do you really want to try and hit him with some sort of rush early on? Probably not. Anyway, second town center already coming up for Salami. Very, very quick TC here. One of the fastest TCs you can possibly do here with the English. you love to see it. He's gone for a very nice one. Obviously, with a town center on the wood line, means he doesn't have to go for the lumber camp. So, saves himself 50 wood. Gets it up 50 wood faster. Take a look at this. Don Artie already on that second town center as well. So, one of the things we did see yesterday, the themes of yesterday, was two town centers. At the very least, two TCs coming out for most players throughout the game. And Marine Lord going to be moving away with 900 wood in the bank. And we'll be looking to throw down, I suspect, a second TC. And you can see there is a real theme beginning to build here. And take a look at this. Scout is spotting this out. Puppy Paw going to be looking to deny this town center away from Anatan. And we'll have some luck. Horseman also coming in the rear. Puppy Paw looking to play very aggressive early on in this feudal age. Remember, if you manage to secure a kill in the feudal age, it's going to be an extra point for you. So not just one point, but two points. And if you get the very first kill of the game, then that's another point on top. So maybe the Puppy Paw is looking to get out early on. Puppy Paw was the winner of Outback Octagon 1. And he did it just through kills. He never won a game. He just he killed a lot of people. And he was able to push his points well and truly up. But we do see a lot of villagers being lost early on. Anatan down to 19 villagers here. Puppy Paw on 33 that is something concerning. That is something very concerning. I tell you what, maybe Puppy Paw is actually in a pretty decent spot here. Down on the south side, Beastie about to click up to Castle Age. Wham going to be doing the same thing. Of course, already doing it. Military wing coming through for him. It's going to be a bit of a slow and steady age up, but he's got the pocket position here uh, and definitely a little bit closer to the relic. So I'm sure he'll be happy with that. Third down center now for the Don. Going to be coming up on that large gold vein. He is booming like an absolute madman. Where's Marine Lord and what is he doing? Marine Lord's just kind of chilling out at the moment. Upgrades have come through. He's gone for Wheelbarrow, double Broadaxe. We see them coming through at the moment. And now the wall's going to be coming in. Look at this. Puppy Paw says, hey. Oh my god, Puppy Paw's walling him in. I tell you what. If you're worried about kings making a run for it, if you're worried about losing that king point, 
Be worried not. The walls are coming up, baby. He's actually walling him in completely. Let's check in over with Urk. Urk on two town centers. Also, no, not going to be going for Castle Age unless he's already clicked up. Uh, it doesn't look like he has. So is he going for a third town center? Oh, Urk's going for a third TC. Wow, this is a big play from Urk coming through. Salami going to be walling off the other side. We can see those villagers coming through now. And now the villagers moving into position. He is completely walling him in. One villager, two villagers, three villagers, four villagers, five villagers, all walling in, all perfectly spaced apart. Khan coming through and Atand realizing he's in trouble. There's a huge economy behind this. Remember, he's been sitting out on the water all this time. So he's got a massive food economy coming through. He's going stable and the archery range. So he's just pumping nonstop units out here. And you've got to wonder, how does Anatan possibly keep up with this? Considering he tried to go for a second. Oh, he did go for a second TC. He's going to need to channel his inner salami right now if he wants to make this work. Puppy poor. Going to be looking to try and take him out before anybody else can really get up to Castle Age, before they can capitalize. Obviously, the biggest threat is Marine Lord. He's the closest, but he's gone for that second town center, so it should buy him a little bit of time. And if he can get three points onto the board early on in this game, he'd be very happy with himself. Not to mention the fact it could be 50 points early on that he'll be able to get. And look at this. We got ourselves a little bit of a counter wall coming through. Salami actually going to be walling onto villagers that have already got their... Uh, have already got their, their, their chop through on the respective piece of... Uh, piece of palisade Khan now coming up for marine lord bc reaching the castle age we can see a couple feeler units going to be sent out here wham he's moving out with camels beastie double military school blacksmith not thrown down just yet but will will be thrown down shortly second battering ram third battering ram wow this is a death push from puppy paw you know we often talk about feudal age as a little bit of a i don't want to say a suicide but if you get caught in a, in a feudal age fight it's not going to go well for you. And you can see that Puppy Paw has realized that. He said, we want our fights to be decisive. We want them to be very quick. And that's exactly... Oh my God, Anatan's completely... It, it, he's done. He's done. He's absolutely done. There's, how does he hold this? There's way too many units. This is it. This is a good game already. Coming out for Anatan. Villager's going to get pulled. There's so many camels here though. How do you even deal with it? Villager popped through on the other side. Okay, looking to try and deal with it. We'll need to bring these rams around a little bit over towards this right side, but the villager's just getting eaten alive. Managed to jump back in the town center. He's down to 27 villagers. Brings more villagers towards this front town center. He's trying his best. Where's Marine Lord behind all of this? That is going to be the question. Marine Lord double archery range. Producing double archers from it, but obviously no sign of Castle Age just yet still stacking up those resources and so it means that he's not really going to be able to threaten with that classic night spam that we see players in the castle age doing but already early on in this game we may have one player going down khan king and 13 villagers inside they're going to be looking to try and break through here the question is going to be whether he's got the tempo or whether he can maintain the tempo the, the first of the town centers is going to go down 600 health on that bad boy king going to come out and we can see all of the units get taken out has he managed to pick up plus one ranged attack he hasn't so he's going to have to head back to the drawing board and the drawing board includes a couple of additional rams. Very interesting decision. Don Artie, look at this. Fourth town center now coming down for the Don. He's having a field day. And battle lines being drawn between the two players on the east. Urk outlining where he believes his territory begins. Salami agreeing somewhat to it, saying, you know what? We can, uh, we, we can, we can come to terms. Now, of course, when it comes to attacking, players are not allowed to, uh, to say, hey, let, let, let's let's not attack each other. I mean, you, you could always just kind of infer that you don't want to attack somebody and, or hope that they're, they're going to do that. But uh, at the end of the day, they, they can't be doing that unless there's an actual good reason for it. But look at this. Look at the rams. The, the question is going to be whether Puppy Paw is investing too many resources and Marine, Marine Lord just overtakes him. Marine Lord yet to hit Castle Age, though. Keep that in mind. And Don Arty, he's on four town centers. 67 villagers already. He's going to be clicking up to Castle Age very shortly. There, never mind. He's already gone up Culture Wing for the Don. That could be an issue for Marine Lord because he, he's right next to Don Adi. So, you know, Marine Lord might be thinking, all right, well, let's see. I'm going to just try and take out Puppy Paw. We got lots of archers here. But, uh, well, it's uh, it's uh, it's about to get a lot harder for Anatan before it gets easier. And I fear that the only place it's going to get easier for Anatan is the next game. Battering Ram's coming in. Villagers going to be pulled forward. He's trying to bring them out. Trying to bait them away from picking up those extra resources. Anatan really channeling his inner salami right now. One villager on the back line repairing up that town center. I tell you what, this is so early to be dealing with six battering rams. You can see he's trying to bring the archers in to deal with this. He's just having so much trouble. Really doesn't want to commit. Plenty of outposts getting thrown down and Urk reaches the castle age over on that east side of the map. Back towards base. He's still holding on Marine Lord. No sign that he's pushing in at this point. He throws down the castle age landmark. 
Battering Ram's working their magic. He's looking to hit down that main town center. Four villagers inside of it. He wants to just avoid these units running around. You can see just how hard he's having it. Now, remember, he's walled him in completely. He's gone to the edge of the map, so there's no opportunity for a chop through. He's going to have to siege through if he actually wants to do it. And now real trouble is beginning. Main towns are going to be going down. He looks to surround this position. Don Arty reaches the castle age. Marine Lord's going to be following up him up shortly. King still sitting inside that safe town center. Puppy Paw utilizing that fishing economy perfectly. Recognizing I need to make a mogul move early on. And indeed he does it. Archer numbers. They're beginning to fall. Where's the town center? Town center firing down at the horseman. There's not a lot of melee units here. Keep in mind the Mongols don't have access to the Keshiks just yet. Uh, so he's not going to be able to easily defend. But the king is now on the ground. No walls. But he might be able to siege through. He could be able to siege through the Palisade Wall. Let's see how he goes about playing it. Anatan with no food in the bank. Horseman trying to make a connection here. He's going to have to try and pick up villagers so that the siege is dealt with. That's going to be the biggest threat. Because you can you can take out the, the king, but the king's got a lot of ranged armor. He's got four ranged armor here. Only five damage. So ideally, I think you're probably just going to want to pick off the villagers. And he's, he's trying. He's trying. Oh, no. A marine lord's on the move. Marine lord's on the move. He's got his Khan with him, though. So he's probably going to have not a lot of information about it. It looks like the walls will be preventing that king from leaving. And there you have it. Meanwhile, Marine Lord, absolutely clueless what is happening behind the walls. He's going to look to try and bring this forward. I don't, I don't think, I don't think Anatan realizes either. The Puppy Paw going to try and chase this down. Does Marine Lord spot it? Marine Lord's Khan comes forward. This might be it. This might be it. He might realize, okay, he spots it. Oh, this could be terrible for Puppy Paw. He's invested so many resources into dealing with this. More, more units going to be coming in. Horseman looking to try and clean this up. A little bit of an attack move. Goes wrong. He's forcing back these units. He knows exactly how important it is to do that. And he's going to have the king all to himself on the back line. And it looks like Anatan will be going down shortly. Meanwhile, across the map, walls continuing to be drawn. And look at this. Salami is meaning absolute business over here. I suspect we've had a white tower or two. Indeed, we have. Oh, it's going to be a white tower. And the king trying to T-pose his way out of it. It's just a matter of time until he goes down, ladies and gentlemen. But your first kill of the game is going to be Anatan going down to Puppy Paw. And that's going to collect, or that's going to net Puppy Paw three points early on in this game. That puts him out to a very strong lead. And already we can see now a little bit of a problem in Paradise as Urk is under pressure. Manganel, big shot on the back line. He's got crossbows here, looking to try and push through. Salami doing some decent jobs. Decent jobs, doing a decent job of denying this keep. As long as he's able to deny this keep, he should be okay. Knights come through. Repairs coming in. Oh, he doesn't manage to get it, though. Meta looking to join the battle. Still behind this. We can see the, the crossbows are trying their best to deal with it. Battering rams. He's got three of them. Keep is, is coming up. Looks like it might be successful, but how many villagers have been taken out? 70 villagers here for Urk at the moment. Compared to Salami, he's on 71. And the keep comes up, but it's on 1,100 health and now looking to start repairs. He doesn't have the units here to deal with it. He's got a handful of knights, but they're fighting up against the men-at-arms, fighting against the spears, against the crossbows on the back line. And the keep, if it goes down, it's going to be incredibly difficult. How does, how does he possibly hold this if the keep goes down? More villagers going to get pulled, but the keep goes down. And now that opens up Salami's opportunity to push into this base. And you can see the outpost going to be coming down for him having an absolute field day. Meanwhile, down towards the south side, Beastie under pressure. Town Center going to be going down for the Beast here. My fear is not only is it going to be going down, it's going to be getting cancelled because that is looking unlikely to be successful. Keep in mind, Wham's got a water economy by, behind this. That's what's powering this. Meanwhile, back towards the base, Salami pushing through. Don Artie out in the middle of the map. No sign that we've got any real aggression, but hold, it, hold your horses. Puppy Paw under pressure from Marine Lord. They said there wouldn't be action in these final games. Well, it looks like somebody may have been wrong. I'm not looking at you, Don. Anyway, we've got the town centers under pressure. Keep in mind there's three TCs that Urk opened up with here. Compare that to Salami. I think he went for two into Fast Castle. Now you can see the power of that English town center play. Down towards that south side. It looks like Beastie has managed to stabilize against the threat that was Wham. But it definitely creates a bit of an issue for him. Wham is a very strong power in this game. Access to deep sea fish means that he's in a really, really good spot here. Barracks going to be thrown down on Salami for the early game. Sacred Sight in the center. Looking to get picked up here by Don. Don's on four relics already. Let's do a quick relic check, see how we're doing. Uh, up towards the north. Well, we've got ourselves a, a little bit of a fight and we've got Castle Age Lancers here fighting up against Poppy Paw. When it comes to relics, Beastie with one, Wham with one, Don with four relics. That is a huge difference. I don't know whether we just didn't get a lot of relics spawn this game. You're meant to have 11, 
on these map. In fact, there are a couple that are still hidden away. We can see them slowly but steadily, but it looks like Salami early on is doing a wonderful, miraculous job of dealing with Urk. Definitely one of the favorites coming into this, uh, this uh, grand finals day. I tell you what, if, if you asked anybody on day one, do you think Urk's chances of winning this are high? They would have told you no. You ask him yesterday, they would have said, oh yeah, oh yeah, he is an absolute beast. He has definitely shown himself to be a top free-for-all player over the last few weeks. And now Puppy Paw really under pressure. He's on 68 villages, Marine Lord on 89. So where Puppy Paw manages to take out one player, it appears he may be the next one on the chopping block. And take a look at this. Look at the, look at the attack that's coming out. Wham on 80 military population against Beastie on 47. He's going to try and hold. He's thrown down an extra town center. He's going to need more than military though, or more than economy at this point in time. Marine Lord, big base starting to build up. Lancer numbers incredibly high here. You can see a couple archers just sitting there on the back line, still trying to bait forward. He's got plus two range attack, plus two ranged armor. There's no way. There's no way. Together with the veterancy, there's no way the Puppy Paw can take this out. He's got his plus ones, but I tell you what, there's just no chance. Lance is going to be looking to clean this up now. Town Center is going to be going down. Let's ride back in, check in with, uh, with how Urk's going. Now, keep in mind, he's got walls up all along the south side, but they're his walls. He can just delete them. In fact, he's got a gate here. He can technically run out. Sacred site being captured behind the scenes. Beastie under pressure. Down towards that south side. So many spears here. He's got the double mangonel. He needs to hold with the double mangonel. Beastie looking towards that keep. He's got enough to throw down another town center, but he doesn't really need that right now. What he needs is a keep to keep himself a little bit longer alive. Mangonels, we need you here. Springles looking to unpack. He's going to try and hit some damage out on these cavalry units, but instead they're going to run past and just look to link up. First of the mangoes goes down. One mangonel remaining and Beastie in trouble right now. Spears looking to overwhelm his base. Meanwhile, up towards the north side. Town center is pressure, getting pressured here by Marine Lord. Meanwhile, Don Artie just having an absolute field day over towards the west side, capturing relics, four TCs, Imperial Age, sacred sites. He is having fun, that guy. Meanwhile, I mean, is there a potential threat where the king escapes right now? I think that's what Salami's got to be careful of. You've got to be really careful of that king making a run for it. I think you need to rally in more knights, and we see more knights on the way now. Meanwhile, in the base of Beastie, things not going well for him. King under pressure on this south side of the map. Looks like... Looks like Don Artie's decided to wake up. Imperial Age has come through for him. Hand Cannoneers, together with the Spears. Is he going to be able to find the base of, of, uh, of the Marine Lords attacking? Puffy Paw obviously under a lot of pressure towards the north. King's escaped. King has escaped. Where did the king go? Oh, the king's out in the ram. <laughs> the king's out in the ram. He's out in the ram. Run, king, run. Well, I guess roll, king, roll. Look at him go. Puffy Paw managing to get the ram out. Oh, we missed it. Oh, you hate to see it. <laughs> we missed one. We're not going to miss another one. Urk goes down. Salami takes him out. And it looks like Puppy Paw lives to see another day, but not if Don has anything to say about it. Meanwhile, down towards the south side, Beastie on the run as well. There's Kings going down early on in this game. Oh, F's in the chat right now for Drongo. It is a sad state of affairs here to be an octagon commentator, caster, spectator, what have you. And look at Marine Lord. Marine Lord on the move as well. Every King is out of water right now with the exception of the Dons. And I guess Salami's technically as well. Beastie trying to run this king away. He knows it's all over Red Rover forward. Or he's, he's dropping down the king. If he can li link this... Oh, no, the king's been trapped. It looks like Beastie is going to be out for game number one with Wham picking up a kill. Getting that extra 50 pop. It all just comes down to these fish, right? Nine fishing boats is what makes the difference in these games. Can you imagine playing on Boulder Bay, but you've got access to the water and your enemy doesn't? That's what we just witnessed right here. That's the difference that you see right there. Bombard already out for the Don. Don Artie somehow manages to keep Puppy Paw trapped behind his own walls. These what walls. The walls that once worked against Anatan now work against Puppy. And it is this is just a crazy case of like there's always a bigger fish, right? Anatan gets eaten by Puppy Paw. Marine Lord tries to eat Anatan. It's not successful because Don Artie eats him. It's like it, we just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Oh, man. You, 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 you hate to see it, but you love to see it. King looking to try and escape. Where do, does Don have the king out? Don does. I don't know whether he's popped that uh, that ability to reveal just yet. It's taken him some time to work through. I think he's just used it right then. Yeah, there we go. Treason is, is applied. It is used. And you can see those units moving over. So many hand cannoneers. These guys, as long as they get into range, they, they will absolutely destroy the king. King looks to make it back through the gates. But, he, but you can see that he doesn't have permanent vision on it. Treason ability. It's going to come back up again shortly. Don Artie needs to make sure that he throws that down. He's on, he's on 3k resources. We can probably track his gold as a best indicator for it. Now looking to make a break for it. This is where you really need that cavalry. The rewall comes through at the front side. 
And now Salami looks to put some pressure on towards the middle. Marine Lord going to be the next one under pressure early on. King still moving. We're not going to miss this one. Let's do a quick king check. See how we're doing. Don Artie safely in with, with two keeps. Uh, we've got the king down here in the town center. Where's the king for Marine Lord? We saw him out of water not too long ago. Salami looking to chase him away. Puppy Paw, he says, oh, that, 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 that's not good. That's not good. Puppy Paw trying his best to stay alive right now. Uh, is Don? Did Don, Don just give up on the king? Castle Age comes through for Puppy Paw. Okay, there's a will, there's a way. You can do a puppy. You get a veteran king now. Slightly better than the last one. Lots of keeps coming out for Don. Don eyeing off that sacred victory, potentially. Could be the way. Maybe just looking for a little bit of extra gold. Don really not aware that Salami is, is poking around here. Now, the king for Salami should be in the White Tower. Let's have a look and see. Yeah, there he is. So not using that uh, that treason ability, at least just not yet. Stonewall's coming through. He's managed to get to the Castle Age as well, which means he's going to be able to throw down the keep here. Don's got the means to deal with this, but Salami doesn't. And there's a full stone wall coming up right now. I don't I don't think uh, I don't think Salami's going to be able to take this in time. You can see him identifying one section of the wall. We got three players up here, Don. Well, rather, yeah, I mean, we, technically we've got three players up here. Don, obviously looking to take out Puppy Paw, but we've also got Salami in here as well. Hand Cannon is managing to take out plenty of units. Salami going to be clicking up to the Imperial Age right now. Down towards the south. It looks like Marine Lords decided to push through. I'm not sure where the king is. There's the king. The king sitting inside one of those secondary town centers. They're now managing to clean up all these forces. Salami bringing in quite a bit. Don needs to bring more to the party. He's got all of these units just kind of chilling out. But w what does all of this mean if you don't get the king? Wham now reaches the Imperial Age. I think Don realizes that and immediately brings everybody over. He's like, actually, you know what? We, we do need to deal with this. Don wants this badly. So Wham reaching the Imperial Age. Going up with uh, the military wing. And now... As a, actually, what's the military wing? Let's take a look. I, I think it's the... Uh, yeah, he went with the uh, the economic wing, rather. So Don now looking to push through. Keep in the back. <laughs> a couple of spears here. Puppy fighting to the death. Now, you got to remember here. You, you, you want... You want to try and make yourself live as long as possible so that you're draining as much resources from the person who kills you. Because if the person who kills you has an easy time, then they're going to have an easier time defending against the next person and then beginning to build up a lead. Ideally, you want to keep everybody's points low so that you've got a better option of eclipsing them because at the end of the day, you want to win this. It's not winner takes all, but still, you, you want to try and win. Now Don on the front line going to be throwing down battering rams. Marine Lord forced back for the moment. Big archer mass for him. Salami forced back as well. It looks like Don is going to have that kill all to himself. Don playing a beautiful game so far. Just playing very passively. He went for quadruple town center in the feudal age, up to the castle age, straight to Imperial. Captured sacred sites, picked up relics. He's up to five relics now, by the way. And now that wall will be going down. Needs to make sure he's got units on it, ready to go. There's the wall. Oh, it's a, it's a, there's, there's no way you're rewalling that. Definitely no way. Puppy Paw now heads back towards the keep. He's locked in the corner. Nobody puts Puppy in the corner. Except for Don. A tough circumstance right here. Doesn't look like anybody really threatening uh, to even come and take this away from the Don. So as long as this bombard continues, it's rampaging torrent of shells towards this position. It's going to be over for Puppy Paw very shortly. But he'll be happy with his performance. He will be happy with his performance. Picking up the first blood in the Feudal Age is going to net him three points early on. That's exactly what you want. So, so far we've seen three points over to Puppy Paw. We've seen one point to Wham. We've seen one point over to, to Salami. But where do we go from here? Don about to pick up his own point. Bring it down to four players. You can see Puppy Paw here with the hand cannoneers on the back. He knows it's all over Red Rover. And indeed, Puppy Paw goes down. We didn't miss that one, Mum. We got that one. All right. Let's check in over on the eastern side. So who's got kills at the moment? Wham's got a kill. Salami's got a kill. Don has picked up a kill. And there's a little piggy in the middle, a Marine Lord, who is yet to pick up a kill. But that doesn't necessarily mean he can't fight pound for pound with these guys. If there's one thing that we learned from the games, I think it was yesterday. It might have been yesterday or last week. I'd have to double check. State. Trying to to win with a one... I think... With, was it the games yesterday? I'm pretty sure it was. State trying to win with a wonder victory against three players despite only being 200 pop and all of them being 250 slash 300s. And he held on for such a stupid amount of time even despite that. So, there is an option for Marine Lord. 
And he can always look to try and utilize the stone walls of somebody else. Somebody once gone. All right, let's check in with Wham on that south side. It's doing pretty well down here, adding in lots of farms. Economy for these players starting to get bigger. Over towards the east side. Salami also doing the same thing. Plenty of gold now starting to trickle in for him. Anybody working towards a wonder? Well, Marine Lord reaches the Imperial Age. I guess technically he's always working towards a wonder because it's very easy for him to afford. So he's maxed out at this point. But he's going to be under pressure from Don. Don looking to put the hammer down. So now we got ourselves a little bit of a, a, a difficult spot here. Because Marine Lord's going to find himself piggy in the middle. Now he can try and fall back towards these this stone wall corner. But I can't help but feel like it might be a little bit too, too late for it. We hear more relics being picked up. I think that's Salami picking up a relic and... Gonna be throwing it down. Where's Salami bringing that relic? Because I'm pretty sure he already had that one relic. Could just be the case that... Uh, well, Wham's captured. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen. If it isn't the most notorious trader in the world, Wham01. Now, where does he trade to from here? Because he, he can just send his traders into this trading post and then over to a market, like over here. There, there you go. <laughs> that, and as you can see, this is exactly the, the correct play. Um, oh, you can actually use the coastal trade post. I, I didn't even think about that. He can just use the coastal trade post. Oh, that's what he's going to do. He's not even going to use this one. Okay, that, that makes sense. That makes sense, Wham. I'll accept that. Don Hardy now. We're going to push through. Just when we thought Wham was the only trader, it looks like Don says, actually, I want to trade some units with you here. Don sitting on 250 pop, having an absolute wonderful day. 144 military pushing towards the base of Marine Lord. Where is that king? Where is that king? That's going to be the big question on everybody's mind. Get the king out. King inside the main town center. 7,000 health on this bad boy. Does Salami realize it's happening? Does Salami look for a potential kill as well? We knew it was inevitable. Bombard starting to push through. Don living his best life now. Resources in the bank for Don starting to climb. He's up to 3.6k stone. Town center. Might go down shortly. One more shot. Hand cannon is on the other side. He's looking to bring through all of these units. There's the king. King's on the, on the ground. Trying to get take it out. King pops the movement speed. Says, see you later. Marine Lord lived to see another day. But is it really going to be that much longer? As, I mean, ideally these bombards, you should have brought them over right here so that they can one shot the king as well. Lessons learned, Don. Maybe for game two, mate. And the king's run out of juice. The king has run out of juice. Elite horsemen managed to find him. Oh, do they spot him though? They do, they do, they do. They see him. More, more horsemen coming up. Looks like outposts will be coming up in the north as well. He'll be able to stay alive a little bit longer. You can see that movement speed coming in right now. 1.25 movement speed. He comes in front. Pops the movement. Oh, is that? No, that's the yam, I think. He's trying to find the surround right here. T-posing his way through. Looking to try and get a block. Is he going to be able to have it? It looks like he won't. He's, he's just working down the outpost already. Now going to have to start taking out the villagers instead. Definitely the right call to take out the villagers. I mean, at this point, you could probably just leave the bombards in base. Down towards that south side, Wham is slowly but steadily getting that wall going. And, well, dare I mention the trade? Dare I mention the trade? How much gold are we looking at? 176 gold right now for Wham. And King towards that north side. King towards that north side. He's trapped a little bit right here. Manages to get inside the outpost. We're going to try and chase the villagers away. Pops the King out once again. He's on that top side outpost. Spring on emplacement coming through. King out of water. Marine Lord trying to stay alive, but it's not going to matter, ladies and gentlemen. He's knocked out. And Don Artie picks himself up a second point in this game and puts himself in a wonderful position for victory in the late game as Marine Lord gets taken out. 300 population max now for the Don. Salami and Wham, both sitting on 250s. Who's going to blink first in this situation? I think it's probably still a little bit early to blink. Throw down a wonder. If there's anybody who's going to do it, you know, I'm looking at you, Salami. This guy, he's always ready for a wonderful time. Ah, Marine Lord. That's what happens when you shove your ham at the start of the game. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have shoved your ham. All right, well, you will notice that chat is now a little bit different. Uh, so because Marine Lord's out, we're actually taking chat from him. What you're seeing at the moment is Marine Lord's cat. Uh, I'm not even kidding you. That That is a part of Marine Lord's cat because uh, we're taking his 
We're taking his streamer. It's, it's, his, it's his background desktop. So that's why it's all white. So I can either leave that up there so you can see the in-game chat sometimes, but you will get flashbanged with cat occasionally in there. Uh, oh, Marine Lord actually in the chat right now saying, are you using my chat or, or what? Uh, yes, we're, we're using yours, Marine Lord. Uh, please don't leave the game. <laughs> so, so, we, we were using salamis, but salami didn't have a, a, uh, a delay on his. And we're like, uh, this is five minutes in, in, the, uh, in the future. We can't be having this. You guys are talking about feudal age. All right, well, hopefully chat is okay for you guys. Let's do a little bit of a king check. Let's let's get up to date with the king. So we've got a keep that's back here. No king in it just yet. Probably wants to avoid that gauntlet for now. Might even just be a bit of a, an insurance policy. Don, safely with the king inside. One of three keeps. Remember, he's going to be able to pop it out onto these top side. He's got boiling oil. He's got the bombard emplacement as well. Or the cannon emplacement. Is it cannon emplacement? I always get confused. Cannon emplacement. Cannon and bombard. They always confuse me. And I think Don's in a really good spot. When it comes to Wham, I think Wham's also in a, in a great spot because he's trading. He's got that extra population. There is one way through Wham's base. I don't know whether Don needs it or will realize it. There is a king somewhere around here. Does anybody see the king? Where is the king? Oh, he's, he's right here. Look at that hiding spot. That's a good little hiding spot, isn't it? You really don't see him there. That, that, is, that is very sneaky. We're lucky this game is 3D. If this was Age of Empires 2, you'd just never see this king. So King ready to jump inside the keep. Yet to get through the um, court architects on these keeps. I will just note that. Don Arty has picked up his court architects. Let's check in over on the east side though. And it looks like Salami's gone for the Wingard Palace instead of going for the Barkshire. Something that we have seen a lot of English players do is go for that Barkshire, normally in the back corner, just to try and keep that King safe and alive. But I think realistically, if you've got a King in the back of the Barkshire and you know, your, your double stone walled up and all that kind of stuff, Game's all already over if you've got to pull the Barkshire, the Barkshire plug out. I mean, I guess not really, right? Like, you know Salami. He's the type of guy who's always going to be going for those crazy plays. So anyway, we now head into a little bit of a stalemate, but that is okay because there's always a bit of a build up before the storm, a little bit of a calm before the storm. Don Artie now up to a maximum of 300 population. We see Horseman up towards the north. He's sitting on five relics for the moment. Obviously exhausting all the relics of the players gone by. And it looks like the king is on the move now for the Don. He's going to be heading down to that west corner. You want to know what this really opens him up to? And I, I, I would be very careful if I was Don. A drop. Wham. Two transport ships, okay? One full of 16 lancers. The other one full, maybe like five or six, um, five or six, whatchamacallits, uh, bombards. Comes in. Drops off right here. The Lancers run along this wall until they find a gate and they sit there. The Bombards make their way through slowly and steadily. You use treason. You spot the king. Boom. Work your way towards that keep. How, how does Don even react to that? He's got no production down here. There's nothing really defending it. And to be fair, this is all open. Where the Wham spots it though is going to be a different map. Building a wonder. Salami's building a wonder. Nice and early on in this game. He says, come on, come on, let's do it. Salami going to be trying to defend this very early on. This this was... I, I kind of would feel like he may have jumped the shark a little bit here on the wonder. Does anybody know what jump the shark means? That, that is a complex reference. I would expect, you know, with the demographics that we've got, I would expect a lot of you guys would know what jumping the shark is right now. Is it jumping the shark? Or is it jumping the gun? Because he could have jumped the gun as well. But there's a part of me that's a con concerned for Salami right now. 15 minutes to go on that wonder timer. And we begin to see production being thrown down in his direction immediately. Wham says, well, I got 50k res in the bank. But if there's one thing we know about Salami, he is an entertainer at heart. He, he loves going for those entertaining plays. And in this game, I think, you know, realistically... This is a good opportunity for him to win. Think about it from the... Think about it uh, from the perspective of Salami. Do I hold on for another five minutes? Let, let's say I, I, I hold until 45 minutes. What if Donati just throws down a wonder at 44 minutes? And he's throwing it down with 65 villagers. And you can't possibly get bills in position in time. And now your opportunity to have a wonder victory is completely gone. So I think Salami's recognized, you know what? I want to try and pick up points here. 
I'm not going to pick up points if I if I die, but I will pick up points if I win, which is a, a, a correct assessment, Salami. Very good. And, and of course, wonderful Drongo for, for pointing it out. Look at that. Great thinking, Drongo. All right, so already Salami pushing out. He's only got 68 military. We're looking at 47 of them at the moment. Just starting to push down with a little bit of a a little bit of a mass, nothing too crazy. Probably just going to be looking to keep that production back. Salami with some very cute walls, some interesting walls. And up towards that north side. Villages of Salami going to be taken out. Salami at the moment sitting on about 36k resources. Keep in mind he is playing English, so he does have the fastest producing farms in the game. I'm pretty sure they're the fastest farms in the game. Has anybody done the math on that? What What's faster? Abbasid farms or, or English farms? Or Holy Roman Empire farms? I guess they're, they're probably pretty quick as well. I would imagine the Holy Roman Empire farms, right? They get the extra 40%. And is that base 40%? Oof. Ah, you hate to see it, Salami. You hate to see it. I guess today it seems that the Abbasid have got the fastest farms. All right, well, Salami's... Wait. Oh, <laughs> never mind. I was like, what is this MIA doing right here? This is that a weird little spot for it? Then I realized that... Uh, it, <laughs> it, it looks like right now that Salami is attacking Wham's base, and technically he is, except it, it's not his main base. <laughs> this is... It's a little bit confusing right now. Up towards the north side, Don, with his very large army, is pushing through now. All right, well, it looks like we've lost in-game chat from Marine Lord. I do apologize. Uh, I I can try and bring it up for Salami. Give, give me a second here. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and bring it up for Salami. Hopefully that should be working. We will now have Salami's chat. Uh, I'm going to have to bring back this. Okay, we're back. Uh, I'm not sure what happened there, but my computer just shat itself right there. Uh, OBS is back. Hopefully you guys are back. Apologies. I, I was sitting here casting, wondering what the hell you guys are all complaining about. And then I realized that the, the screen wasn't moving. Apologies. It, it, it must have been an issue. It must have been an issue with one of the sources. We're back though. We're back. Oh, this is terrible. I feel sorry for everybody involved. Salami holding on for dear life right now. Salami trying his best to hold on. He's, un he's under real pressure though. Don Hardy cleaning up towards the top side. On the bottom side, it's going to be Wham. Looking to try and clean up the mess. Huge apologies right there. So for anybody wondering what happened, uh, Marine Lord closed out of his out of his game so we lost chat and i wanted to get chat back so i opened salami's stream and for whatever reason obs literally just froze it said i was still recording it said i was still streaming but it wasn't moving and so i had to force close it we had to reopen obs so we could stream and, and record and unfortunately we we just we we, we lost everything I, I suspect i'm not 100 percent sure though All right, well, Salami's still got seven minutes to go. I, I feel like things... He, he's holding on, but he, the, the number of production buildings he's got on the back is not the best. He does have the mangonels, though, in the pocket. And that's one way that he can hold. Landmark's going down. Where's the king? King's safely inside the keep. He's completely stonewalled in, remember that. He's going to be outranged by the bombards as they come through. The wall will be opened up. Salami realizing he may have jumped a little bit early on this one. Another keep going to be coming up. If, if I'm Don Adi, I, I'm thinking about the threat to my south right now. Like, it, it is very clear. We're pushing through. We've got so much steam. We're going to be fine. The, the problem is... He can't, he can't make the wonder until Wham makes it. And you can see Wham's got the resources for it as well. Where does Don look to throw it down? Does he have Vils in position? He's, he's, chop, he's chopping out through the back. 
Does Wham have Vils in position? It, it doesn't really look like Wham's got Vils in position. Maybe I'm missing them. We see them moving back now. Okay, it looks like he's moving Vils back. Salami trying to hold on. Six minutes to go until Wonder defeat comes through for these guys. Don Artie suffering a lot of damage to those mangonels. He's just going to have to take it slow. Villagers will go down, but the keep gets up. The heals immediately start coming through. It's like boiling oil, but in reverse. The rewall comes in. Salami holding on 443 stone in the bank. He's completely exhausted of resources. You might be looking at that and saying, well, Jongo, he's got 19k food. Yeah, but he's got 133 gold, my friend. It's not a lot. It's not a lot of gold. Moving forward now. Springles managed to take out the Bombards. He's deleted the wall as well so that the Springles are able to open up the defense. He picks off... Oh, this is an interesting style. I don't know if you're going to be able to outlast it. He could just throw Gates up. Gates are probably the best way to deal with this. Actually, hold on a minute. Salami can use the Gates to look through and get shots off on those Bombards. Now taking his own walls. Looking to repair the wall. No, he's just going to re-wall in the middle. Looks like we've got Vils moving down into position for Wham. Don Artie with a lot more villagers ready to go, though. And he's like quadruple stone walling, At least triple. Big army up towards his top side. Mango still firing off. Stone wall. Holding its own. He's on six Springles. Still got 390 90 stone in the bank. Wall goes down again. Plenty of siege back here. Salami holding on for dear life. Springles taking out the Colves. Colves looking to, to take out the Mangoes by the looks of it. Salami does have resources in the bank. I don't know whether he's got a marker though. That's going to be the question. Stonewall's coming down. And that's going to open up everything. All the units going to be flooding through. And the Wonder goes down. I didn't even see it. I think did he, he deletes the Wonder. I think he deleted the Wonder. He's trying to stay alive for a little bit longer. Donati immediately throws down the Wonder. How many villagers have we got? 67. Let me see it, Wham. There's Whams. 47 villagers for Wham. Wham's pulling more. He's pulling all. Needs to pull every single villager. We got ourselves a race, ladies and gentlemen. Don, well and truly, off to a crazy start. 67 vills here. I think Wham's just got to delete the Wonder. He's got 73. It's not going to be enough, not considering this. Don Arty right now sitting at close to... Yeah, 4.8k. I mean, technically he does have the, uh, the, the extra little bit. King actually survives. But now the issue... So Don gets the Wonder up before Salami dies. Now he wants to kill Salami. Now is the time to kill him. You get the extra points. So Wham just going to leave the Prayer Hall of Ukba sitting here. And this is a bit of an awkward spot for Wham, right? Because Wham now all of a sudden has the incentive to fight this army from Don. But the thing is, Don is still going to win. Because the, the Wonder is dead from Salami. He deleted the Wonder so that he doesn't die. I think the best thing right now that Wham can do... He, he tried with the Wonder Race. I mean, we've seen Don, Don Artie win Wonder Races before. I think the best thing he could have done, or best thing he could do is, yeah, yeah, just go for the kill. Go for the kill and just surrender. You say, you know what? That's fine. You take the victory here, Don. You 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 were too quick. And you, I, I think that's just the reality. I don't think Wham was really respecting the, the, the idea or concept of a Wonder. As soon as you see your enemy go, you've got to go, but you've got to go harder. And he, he was 100% ready for it. Look at the resources. Not to mention the fact the Wonder's still standing right now. So he had plenty. And Wham just pumping in units here. I think Don's decided he's not going to make units on the front. We see units now back at base. Don's rebuilding back here. All of this, this production no longer needed. Mangadel's getting some decent shots off. Still plenty of hand cannoneers here. There are ways for Wham to deal with this, though. Honestly, if I'm Wham, complete the Wonder Man. You can go for it. Look at this little... He, he, he knows exactly what is up right now as well. You can just go for the King Snipe. You don't even need to worry about the Wonder. Salami's still chilling out for the moment. Where's he getting these resources from? He's still got 2.2k 2. 2. wood a minute coming in. 
He's got villagers out here. He's got the market. I mean, he can sell the food. It's only 12 gold. It's honest work. So Salami not actually going to die here? Yeah, I, I think this is the right decision from Wham. Just invest really heavily and just try and take him out. I, I love that Salami's still managing to hold on over here. To be fair, there's a lot less units now coming into his base. So now D Don has somewhat saved his life, hasn't he? he? He kind of saved Salami over here. But in the end, what does it matter? All right, let's check in with Wham and see. Oh, oh my lord. Okay, Wham, Wham's actually... Oh god. Is Don ready for this? I don't think Don's ready for this. I don't think he can handle this, Don. I don't think you can handle this. A uh, lot of production. Very, very close to Don's base. Uh, and the problem is Don's production is coming down. And Wham's already got the foothold. Keep going to be going up here. A lot of bills. Uh, that's 30 bills in, he in here. But uh, half of them are Don's. Looks like the keep is not going to be going up. Don Arty. Oh my god. Don Arty on 400 food a minute. 400 food. 1,000, 1,100 food a minute. What did he do with all the villagers? Is it, were they just all gathering wood? Did they idle out? And Salami lives. <laughs> Wham says, I know what the threat is. And I can tell you right now, it's not you, Salami. He's got plenty of production back here. Looks like he's going to be rebuilding. Don might look formidable, but behind this, he's just a big softy. Barely sitting on 1,600 food a minute. We can see Wham starting to fall on his income as well, but does have a pretty good stockpile. Does Wham manage to do this? I'm impressed if he does. I did not account Don's position to be that poor. But it looks like he's managed to put villagers onto farms, get that food economy starting to pump. There we go. Now, one other thing to note is Wham could... He's not going to, but he could look for sacred sites. It's about, uh, about to be past the time where he can actually go for it. And now towards the production. He looks to hold on. Hand cannonier numbers are starting to build. The real key in the late game here is going to be those hand cannoneers. Abbasid versus Abbasid on the west side. Still there is an opportunity. I mean, you don't even really need to take advantage of the drop down here. And Battering Ram's now going to be coming out to clear back this production. Don with a superior mass for the moment. Whether he's going to be able to hold it on. Salami looking to clean out the keeps. Survives to see another day. Does not yet die. Not today. Big force is now starting to come out from where? Mango shot. Oh my lord, off the back line. Don's got 9 minutes and 30 seconds left on this wonder. That doesn't really look like... I mean, you, you're, gonna need, you're gonna need a lot of resources to get through this. Three layers of stone walls. Don's on 154 bills compared to Wham on 123, and I think that's where the big difference lies right now. Don's got that extra population from the kill that he got. He's sitting on 300. So he's able to put more of his economy, more, more of his numbers, into villages. Manganel numbers starting to build. Look at the mango numbers starting to build right now for Donati. Nine mangoes. That, that's the point where they become a threat to cavalry. And we can see just how much damage they're doing. Carl's going to be coming out as well. And at the same time, we see mangoes being masked up from Wham. Both of these player rec players recognizing that, that mangoes are the future. Carl teeing off. Villager's going to get pulled. Donati just throwing away a couple villagers at this point in the game. I mean, he can afford to. He's an Abbasid player. He's got, what, four town centers back home? So he can reproduce if he needs to. He is. He's still making more villagers. Couple of idols here for Don. Wake up, Don. Get it together, son. Look at the siege mass. Spears. Hand cannoneers. Mangonels. Culverin. Name a more iconic late game combo. I'll wave. 
I know what you're gonna do. You're gonna you're gonna say Janissaries and Great Bombards. I was thinking the same thing. Salami pushing out slowly. He's, he's regaining. I mean, Salami's on 89 villages, right? Like, he's not out of the game just yet. He managed... I, I can't believe he actually deleted the wonder and managed to weasel his way out of dying. Don Artie saved him. Let's check in on the back line. Wham's still got the wonder just sitting here ready to go. And... I, is, is it just that he's waiting for... I, I guess he's waiting for Salami, right? Like, he wants Salami on board. And he, if there's two wonders, Salami knows, well, I'm going to lose either way, so I might as well just, you know, chill out. Whereas at least in this situation, maybe there's an opportunity where Salami forgets about this wonder. So he helps distract Don. Wham at the moment, 138 vils. He, he's sitting on about 80 population lower. Or 60 population lower than what Don Artie is. But look at the resources for the Don. He's barely floating a thousand resources at the moment. Still nice shots coming out from the Culvs here. So difficult playing these Abbasid games in the late game. Up against the Culverins. If you're not paying attention, you will lose them. Bombard coming through now. Culverins teeing off. Looking to dive under the keep. Mangadel gets a nice little shot off. It's going to continue pushing up. And remember, the clock keeps ticking. Six minutes to go. Salami making a very hard push right now. Watch out, guys. He's helping. I, I, I feel like this is like the, the classic case of, you know, the four-year-old trying to, trying to hit the adult and you're just holding them back with the one hand. He's, he's working through. It'll, it'll be a couple more minutes and he'll be through all of this. Uh, problem is, in a couple more minutes, Don is going to be victorious. So, ideally, Salami just wants to take a whole bunch of villagers over here and bu build a proxy base somewhere. Don still clearing up out this production. A couple of outposts back here. Do we see any? Do we see... Hello. How you doing? We... You know... You know, what's interesting about this is, is we talked about you a little bit earlier in this game. And I, I mentioned it as a possibility. I threw it out there as one of the potential ways that it could go down. And I, I, I'm kind of glad that I pointed that out because this is a very... It, there's only one pond on this map. And this pond is where it comes down to a potential backdoor into Don. We've seen Don be backdoored before. You would have seen the videos online of Don getting backdoored. I post them quite frequently on my channel. But today, we get to see it happen live. Don gonna fall back for the moment. I think he's obviously cleared out the production and he's just kind of... Oh, does he know? He, 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 was, very, he was moving in a very intent, specific way here. So you throw the Bombards down here. Yeah, yeah, he knows, he knows, he knows, he knows. He says, it is awfully quiet right now on the Eastern Front. What is going on? Don Arty does the right thing, makes the correct call. You can see the transport ships coming in. The biggest thing that you need are bombards because you, you just have to blast through. All right, so for Wham, I feel like the best thing you can do right now, complete the wonder. Complete the wonder and go for... Oh, my God. Don knows. Don actually knows. Oh, Don knows. <laughs> oh, Don. He... Look, you know, we often talk about it, Don. It's important to use protection. It's happening. Plenty of protection coming in now. Keep getting thrown down. On this shoreline. Big death drop. Attempt from Wham. So you might be wondering, how does he know? How does he? How can he possibly know this is happening? He doesn't see any presence on the main front. He knows that Wham needs to win this game. So he's thinking outside the box. How is Wham possibly going to win this game? And he says, well, hold on. I've got a weak point here. Wham, between Wham and I, there is a good chance he could look to exploit that. So he shores up the defenses. And now we see 
The defense has come in. First of the bomber, the first of the ships gets blown out. Second one gets blown out. Third one comes through. Fourth one down as well. And now looking to blast through those stone walls at the same time towards the top side. A little bit of a counter offensive. Salami finally pushing out towards the base of the Don. Don holding on for dear life. Keeps break through the first set of walls. Keepers, the, the rather the Bombard's breaking through the, the set of first walls. Keeps have got boiling oil and a sprinkled emplacement through. And he's, he's trying to race it. You can see he's trying to get through. There's so many layers of walls to deal with though. And if he gets in behind these walls, he can't target the next layer. I think he's too close. Is he too close? No, he's not too close. He's going to try and hold the pocket. He lost too many ships. Blasting through the wall. Two bombards to go. Don Artie's got way too many units though. I think that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Two minutes now. And Don Artie throwing down a new stone wall gate. Gets completely cleaned up here. Wham, heads back to the drawing board. Oh, he's looking for a snipe kill. Oh, he's looking for a snipe kill. Oh, Salami's in trouble. Two minutes to go. <laughs> Wham says, you know what? I can't get the victory, but I'll take a couple of extra consolation prizes. Don't mind me, guys. Where's the king? Where's the king? <laughs> Where's the king? There's no king here. Where's the king? He's on the moon. The king is in another castle. Salami says, hey, mate, I'm not letting you get free points. I want to win as well. And damn right. Damn right. You had the opportunity earlier. You could have taken it. You went for... I mean, I'm not going to say it was greedy to try and stop the wonder. But you come up empty-handed now. There's no knights up here either. I mean, he needs, he needs horsemen. He needs something to deal with this. And with that, it's, it's going to mean that no points get awarded for Salami's kill to Wham. So, you know, th this could mean something in the long term for Salami. You've got to remember, he's trying to keep down the points of Wham. One minute until one to defeat. It's happening. Don Artie in the first game, looking to clean this one up in a very swift manner. All the siege going to be going down here. Of course, Don just going to be chilling out on his wonder. He's happy with his victory. He's happy with his performance. A lovely game from the Don. I don't think, you know, starting off this game, I didn't predict that Don would be in the best position. But obviously, the way it unfolded with Puppy Paw taking advantage of Anatand, the Marine Lord taking advantage of Puppy Paw, and then Don Artie taking advantage of Marine Lord. There's always a bigger fish. And today, the biggest fish was Don Artie. A beautiful game by the Dutchman. Do we call him a Dutchman? I don't know what we call him. I guess you could call him a Dutchman. He's from the Netherlands. I guess technically they are Dutch. And good game. Don Adi is victorious. Salami, wham, defeated. And we move on to game number two. Let's take a little look right now at the economy count. Look how high those numbers got. Almost towards the 200 mark. Really, really high. Then comes crashing down at the end. Don deleting all villagers. Says, you know what? We're just, we're good to go on the military. Boom. Let's have a quick look at the amount of military units killed. Don Artie with 1,500 military killed in that game. Almost double his nearest opponent. Wham. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we move on to game number two. If you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be coming up right away for you guys. So thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one.